slacking a little bit right now. I've been trying to find a makeup look that I wanted to do for this video. So if today's makeup look turns out like garbage, it's because I couldn't find one. I don't think I have any updates for you guys other than I'm getting my hair done again in like a week, which is very needed, very, very needed. Like my roots grown out. But other than that, I'm going to bring you guys up close. There we go. Okay, so before we get into today's story time, just my little usual rundown. For most of the video, I'll be looking in this direction because my mirror's over here and I would like to see what I'm doing. I do tell these story times in a first person point of view, so if you don't like that, then you can leave. And these stories are sent in by anonymous people. Okay, so story time about how I was doing the nasty with my camp counselor. What the fuck? This one should be interesting. Okay, so a little background information. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. And I guess you could say this all pretty much started whenever I was in fifth grade. This was the year that I was finally able to go to this legendary camp that my brothers had always talked about. That they went to literally every year until they were like 18 years old. And now that I was finally old enough I was super excited because this meant that it was the time for me to go make these fun memories and crazy experiences that my brothers talked about and I did okay this camp literally so much fun from the amazing food to the fun people and most importantly um there was like horseback riding there which was my absolute favorite thing to do I ended up liking it so much that I kept asking my family to send me there every summer and my mom was super fucking annoyed because she would always try to get me to do like a sports camp or something else, but it never worked because I would throw a fucking fit. Or my dad would step in and be like, she's not gonna be a cheerleader just like you. Stop living out your dreams through her. Period, dad, put that hoe in her place. Eh. Anyways, that being said, now that I am older and it was the end of my sophomore year, I was only able to be a camper for one more year. They had this rule that once you turn 17, instead of being a camper, you would have to be a CIT or a counselor in training. And I never wanted to be a counselor. Honestly, it sounded like too much freaking work. So I knew this was going to be my last year ever going to this camp. So when the time came, I packed my two big ass suitcases and my mom and I hit the road because we had to drive seven hours away to this camp because it was in West Virginia and we did not live close at all. That's probably another reason why my mom kept wanting me to do something else every summer, but I didn't give a fuck. And pretty much the whole ride up there, I was stalking the new counselor's Instagrams. By the way, if I have like a list, it's because I have my Invisalign. I just switched my trace today, so ignore it. Okay, anyways, like I said, I spent the whole entire time stalking all the new camp counselors on Instagram. And if you think that's weird, then you're weird. Because if you don't stalk people on social media before you meet them, for the first time, what the fuck are you doing? And don't tell me you're being normal because this is 2022. Get it together. Anyways, if you were going to this camp, there was like this contact sheet where you could like put your Instagram or your phone number in, stuff like that. So I ended up like adding everybody on Snapchat. And from the pictures, I saw that there were gonna be a lot of people from the year before, but also, a lot of new faces and these new faces looked very cute. There were a lot of guys from Florida and Chicago and New Jersey who were gonna be there and they literally were very, 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 very good looking. And the good thing was I was single for the summer. I made sure that I was going to be single whenever I came here. Like I broke up with my boyfriend of three months just so I could be single when I go to camp. So fast forward, I fall asleep in the car and as we're pulling into the parking lot, I wake up and when I check my phone, I had 23 new followers and a few Snapchats from some of the counselors. So this was off to a great start already. Once I got to my cabin, I unpacked all of my bags and the cabin that I was staying in had seven other girls. And before the dinner bell rang, I got to talk to a few of them, get to know them. Some of the girls I already knew from the previous year 
years and i'm not gonna lie i was actually really happy this year because sometimes the cabinets that you get put in with certain people like there's always those few that like you really just don't fucking like but this year the cabin was actually full of people who seemed very chill and just like people i could get along with and the girls and boys had separate cabins obviously um once the dinner bell rang we went to that part of camp and finally we got to meet some of the guys and y'all i i'm not even gonna lie i low-key felt like i was on love island okay all of them were my age all of them had the nicest abs and they were all like five nine that is like a 10 out of 10 right there you don't need anything else besides those qualities but not to mention it was literally like open season so obviously there were a ton of other girls and we were all going to be competing to get with certain guys. I guess we all had the same exact idea when we signed up for camp this year. So there was Devin who was 6'2 and really good looking. And then there was Jackie. I would say Jackie was like the shortest one. I'm not even gonna lie. He was like 5'7", but he was like a smooth talker with like the girls. So like, I'm pretty, that that's 10, 10 out of 10. And last but not least, Damien from New Jersey ladies he was definitely the hottest out of all the guys no question about it now obviously there were like more good looking guys but those were like top three so after dinner the girls and i had like a little meeting in like our cabin right and we decided the guys that we were going to go for and which guys were off limits now obviously this was just between us seven girls like we didn't get to talk to any of the other girls at the camp so at least that was like six other girls that we didn't have to worry about going for the man that we wanted even though there were like 20 other girls that we had to worry about so of course everybody else and i wanted to go for damien because like i said he was the hottest one but lizzie was like no i want to go for him da -da 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 -da. and i mean in all fairness to be honest he did like take a really good liking to her at dinner like he sat next to her he talked to her the whole time so it was only fair so i get next pick and i picked Devin, right because even though he wasn't as good looking he was still tall with a good sense of humor so in the end he's an eight or nine i'll give him nine so that night we all had a choice to meet up at the beach by the lake to divide the new campers into their teams now there were two teams once you were on a team that was the team that you were on every summer every single summer so in fifth grade i got put on the razorback team and even though i'm already on my set team i can choose to go and watch the ceremony pretty much and that being said all the guys went so you knew that every other girl and i were going to be there so the girls and i are putting our makeup on getting ready for this ceremony not too much makeup we want to make it look like we're effortlessly beautiful once susan lizzie and i were ready we left all the other bitches at the cabin because we were not about to wait for them so on our way down to the beach we ran into six guys that we had never seen before that also were not on the contact list okay and these guys were even hotter than the guys that i told you about earlier i didn't even know that was possible i didn't think it was once we got closer we realized they were all wearing red shirts now in this camp red shirts meant that you were staff okay lord help me these men were fine as fuck like all of them look like college athletes and but on steroids they were just really good looking we're just gonna leave it there okay like i felt like i was in heaven so i did what hopefully every other girl would do in my situation i played stupid and walked up to them as if i had never been to this camp before and i was like do you guys know where the beach is now your girl's a little socially awkward so that is the only thing that came to mind when i was thinking of what i was going to make up to talk to them but at the end of the day it worked take notes anyways um yeah i already knew who i was going after this summer fuck devin I didn't want him no more. I fell in love with him, one guy, and all he had to say was, it's down there into the left, love, in a British accent. 10 out of 10 just for that. Anyways, at that moment, I knew that it was going to be a very, 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 very long and exciting summer. Anyways, so after I talk to them, I go to the beach where the ceremony is being held, and then I end up 
staying like 15 minutes after to talk to Devin because the only time that you saw the staff was whenever activities were going on. Whenever nothing was going on, you didn't see them. But I couldn't stop thinking of the love of my life aka the British dude. So the next couple days were literally like the most agonizing, annoying fucking days I've ever had in my life. They had us outside every morning at five in the morning to get us used to the new schedule and all the new activities that they had. And while we were doing this, we didn't see the boys at all, like not even once. But after those few days, stuff went back to normal and we got to hang out with them some more. Um, I started to talk to Devin a li little bit more and I definitely started to just forget about the other guy. You know, the one that I said I wanted to marry. Yeah. So Devin and I start hanging out more and the one night while we're hanging out, he's like, Hey, will you come with me to go and get my snacks? That is code for let's go make out behind one of the cabins and i was down for it because this is what i was looking forward to the whole freaking year was this summer um but after a couple of days rumors started going around about relationships between the counselors and the campers it was said that one of the american guys slept with the british dude's girlfriend not not my man another british guy but it was all resolved in the end because you know bros before hoes apparently but the higher ups made an announcement that if they find out that if anybody is getting romantically involved with anyone there will be consequences aka meaning you're gonna get kicked out so after that Devin and i kept it like really low-key because i was not about to get kicked out like it got to the point where we were sneaking out at like two in the morning to go and make out down by the water which usually you could just do that during the day whenever there was nothing to do but yeah so after about two weeks i told him that i wanted us to be exclusive which was okay you just couldn't be doing stuff with each other so if we were boyfriend and girlfriend that was fine right so he promised me to be exclusive for the summer but we weren't gonna tell anybody yet because i'm one of those people that doesn't like to tell anybody about anything until i make sure that it's gonna last because i don't want to look like a dumbass and I'm pretty sure a lot of you probably feel the same way. Like how when you can't tell your parents about a boy because then if you guys break up a week after, it's embarrassing. And I figured this was a good move, especially since girls were starting to realize that it was slim pickings because everybody was already pretty much hooking up with somebody. So girls were trying to get with him, which I was not gonna let happen. So I figured I should probably get our relationship on lock before some little fucking new camper decides to snatch him from me. So the next day, Lizzie and I go to tennis because she's been freaking begging me to go since like the first day we got here. Once we got there, I saw the British guy who we're gonna call Ethan. And bruh, I literally was fighting the fucking air. Uh, I just basically got into a relationship and now this motherfucker wants to show up out of nowhere. Like what the fuck? So he walks up to us and he's like, nice to see you lovely ladies again. I think I should just stop trying to impersonate an accent and yeah, I'm done. Anyways, fast forward, once we start doing the tennis shit i can't figure out how to swing the racket for the life of me so captain save a desperate hoe comes over and he decides that he's going to show me how and i had no clue what he meant when he said he was going to show me how to hit it but he like came over put his hand on my hip grabbed one of my arms i'm like okay Mm. He probably really didn't even mean it that way. I'm probably just taking everything way out of context right now. So anyways, um, y'all, I needed like fucking therapy or something, okay? Because I have an even worse obsession with him than I did whenever I first fucking met him. So after the tennis lesson, I couldn't even think about Devin. Like he was not even a fucking thought in my mind. All I could think about was Ethan. So I tried ignoring Devin for the next few days so I could try and like just figure out what the hell I was going to do, but that didn't work. But at the same time, while I was also trying to figure things out, I was going to every tennis lesson that I could and Ethan and I were getting super close and I was joking with him and I was like, oh, like, you know, you're probably 24, da 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 da. 
And he's like, no, I actually just turned 18 four months ago. So I'm like, oh, maybe I have a chance. So then I told him my birthday and he put it on his calendar so he wouldn't forget because I turned 17 in less than a month. So after a couple of days of not even seeing or talking to Devin, I thought that like, you know, everything was clear. Like I made it clear, I don't want you. Like it was low key, like I ghosted him, right? But as soon as I was gonna tell him that I don't like him anymore, but when I tried to break things off, um, I failed tragically because he was like, I really like you, da da da, this and that. And then we hooked up. But I mean, I didn't think it would matter anyways, in all honesty, because I was kidding myself if I really thought that the British dude wanted me in any way whatsoever. Because if he wanted me, he would have made a move by now, right? Right. So I pretty much said to myself, I might as well have fun while I can before I waste all summer thinking about a dude who probably doesn't even want me. You know, I'm gonna give props because me, I would have thought that he was just trying to play hard to get all summer. So I would have completely wasted my summer pining after him. A guy that doesn't want me. But that's just me. Anyways, Devin was actually there for me. Like anytime that I needed him, he right at my beck and call pretty much, okay? He even decided to be my partner in all of the activities that we were doing throughout the week. Loki, at this point, he felt like my real boyfriend. Like I was ready to commit. Maybe not that part, but he felt like my boyfriend. And there was no way in hell I was going to tell him that. Just in case things worked out with my actual husband, who was being very disrespectful and distant at the moment. But him and I, we made each other these super, super cute friendship bracelets. And I was really, really, really starting to catch real feelings for Devin. Until Mr. Ethan wants to swoop back into my life again. Just kidding. Um, Ethan got sick the one day, so they asked if anybody didn't have a partner and Ethan like jumped up right away and like offered to be my partner. So that was cute. And I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of excited because I wanted to figure out if this man liked me or not. So as we're out on the water, things are super, 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 super awkward because I have no idea what the fuck to talk about. But then he starts blabbing about his fucking life in the UK, wherever the fuck he lived. But then he also started, you know, playing the, what I like to call fuckboy game, telling you everything you want to hear just to get in your pants, you know? And, and if y'all don't know what those are, it's the, oh my God, you're so beautiful. Like, you're like the most special girl in the world I ever met that shit now even though i knew this is what can i say to get in your pants i was flattered okay but i was also trying to tell myself that i kind of have a boyfriend and that i can't be flirting with this guy it's just a guy on a boat who doesn't even like me he doesn't even have one ounce of interest in me so there's no reason to be obsessing but you can only tell yourself that so many times so so i started flirting back with him and then we started talking about how he was a really
active counselor and then he started laughing and he's like oh so that's what i am to you i told you i was done with the accent i'm done now okay i promise and then i was like well you could be more and he was like oh i heard that you had a boyfriend so, so where did you hear that <laughs> and i was like who and he was like uh devin so at this point i want to murder devin because i am not his girlfriend he needs to stop telling people that anyways so my jaw drops and i'm like oh no we're just friends he's like well that's not what i heard well clearly you're fucking deaf so of course after he tells me that's not what he heard um i had to try and get it out of him to see what the hell everyone was saying he was like well i just heard that you guys were sleeping together which was not true we did stuff but we did not sleep together so I was able to tell him that that was a lie. So then I told him that Devin and I were literally just friends with benefits. Like it was literally nothing serious at all. And I don't know why everybody was making it a big deal. Yeah, I played that card. So I told him that we were just friends with benefits, but we stopped being friends with benefits in hopes that he would want to be with me. I'm pathetic. I know. And thankfully, he believed it. He was like, well, you turn 17 soon, so maybe we can work out some type of plan. Whatever the fuck that means. Anyways, he says that and then he gives me a kiss. Okay, y'all, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a hoe, okay? So even though I just did stuff with Devin, I also wanted to do stuff with Ethan, okay? Don't judge me. Once we got back to the dock or whatever, he just straight up walked away and left. Didn't even say bye or anything like that. So now I'm getting mixed signals and now I'm wondering if I just need to literally kick him to the curb. So on that note, I was not ready to cut Devin off yet. What, for some guy who said some weird shit to me and kissed me and has not been kissing the ground that I walk on?